Welcome to paradise. Rarotonga is the beating heart of the Cook Islands and a beautiful holiday destination with so much to offer. With no traffic lights, no big chain fast food and no buildings taller than the highest coconut tree, it's the true definition of island time. Like I said, paradise man, look at that. Welcome to our backyard. What a location. <laughs> With the restrictions eased, we just got back from another visit and met a bunch of travellers that had used our last videos as a guide. So before we share our six episode Cook Island series, we wanted to combine everything we know and love into 12 awesome things to do in Rarotonga. There's a lot more than just beaching and embracing the laid back lifestyle. Plus we've got a few bonus tips at the end. So kick back and let us show you why you'll love this place as much as us. Explore the lagoon. Raro is surrounded by a lagoon that creates gentle swimming conditions, beautiful coral, loads of different marine life and clear turquoise water. A tour with Captain Tummers or Coca Lagoon Tours is the best way to really appreciate the beauty. Look at all the blues. <laughs> <laughs> the colours are incredible. A glass bottom boat, some traditional Polynesian music, mask, snorkel and the chance to cruise and explore both on top and in the water. eat all the fresh seafood. Hunting out the best kaimoana isn't hard. The fob sandwich at Mooring Fish Cafe is our fave, but you can't look past the muri night markets to crack into a smorgasbord of goodness like this fish curry. Ikamata is a Cook Island seafood specialty and tasting it should be a condition of entry to the country. It's a simple combo of raw tuna marinated in a mixture of lime and coconut milk, but it packs a fresh punch. Other faves are Charlie's Fish Sammies and the fresh grilled fish at the island's top end restaurant, Antipodes. Swim with turtles. Seeing turtles in the wild is straight up majestic. There's a few different options to see two of the four sea turtle species native to the Cook Islands on snorkeling trips, but even better is a sea scooter safari with Ariki Adventures. It's some James Bond action speeding through the water and diving below the surface to watch the turtles just casually cruising in their own environment. Relax in luxury. In recent years, the accommodation mix has changed a bit. There's always been amazing resorts, but now there's also a selection of great Airbnbs too. If taking it easy as you're seen, then location is key to make the most of relaxing, chilling out with a book, beach walks, meeting the island dogs, and having a nice swimming pool too. Kia ora. Kia ora. Welcome to our villa. This is a paradise within a paradise, isn't it? Yaha. <laughs> From our experience, Muri Beach is our pick and Te Whakaroa was perfection in terms of location, luxury, beauty and an exclusivity being small and adults only. Pacific Resort is a few doors down and is a bit larger, more of a resort set up with activities catering towards families. Moana Sands Lagoon Resort is newer, more secluded and offers a nice balance of the two. Of course, those are just three places that we've stayed in, and as we mentioned, the island has a huge selection of options to suit all budgets. On the Cook Islands tourism site, link below, you can filter for your own needs from adults only to family friendly, villa or hotel slash resort, and a bunch more as well. Visit the markets. The Muri night markets are on a few nights a week, offering the best selection of food at a pretty reasonable price. There's something for everyone from smoothie bowls to seafood extravaganzas, drinks, curries, ice creams and more. They're not just a tourist trap either, locals eat here too. On Saturday mornings, the Punanga Nui market is the place to be. It's awesome. It's just a fun thing to walk around and explore something a little bit different. There's loads more fresh food stalls, entertainment, organic coffee, clothes and souvenirs spread out over a much larger area. Again, it's chill, easy, cruisy exploring with both locals and tourists. Chase the sun. On a clear day, the sun in Rarotonga will treat you to the most magical sunrise or sunset you've ever seen. It's as easy or as free as heading a few minutes to the beach for the best reflection. But look at that. Outrageous. But we've got three other great options. If you're super keen, try the sunrise hike with the Rori Mountain Trek. It's a bit of an adventure with climbing ropes and headlamps, but the reward at the top is unreal. Wow. Oh my gosh. The sunset stand-up paddleboard with kites up is a unique one. 
glide around in the lagoon to catch the sunset, hunt for crabs, Whoa. watch a fire show, and then cruise back in the dark with the help of LED lights attached to the underside of the board. If sitting back is more your vibe, Antipodes Restaurant has insane food and views for days, positioned just in the right direction to watch the sun go down. Explore the island. Raro is made for exploring. It's only 32 k's around in a loop and there's only one main road. We always stumble onto something new. A different beach stop, cafes, shops, restaurants, bars or new tour companies. Getting around is easy as well. You can take a walk, hire an e-bike or jump on the public buses going either clockwise or anti-clockwise. There's taxis available too but we recommend having your own wheels with either a scooter or a rental car. Just don't go parking under the coconut trees. Never park under a coconut tree. Drink a local beer or a cocktail. The most common beer is Cook Island's Lager by Rarotonga Brewery and you'll find it everywhere on tap. Of course, this is an island so there's one thing you can guarantee. Happy hour! <laughs> yep, happy hour is a thing and will save you some cash on those fancy cocktails. Trader Jack's is known as a down-to-earth, chill hangout spot to sit back and watch the world go by. The Islander Hotel has a really cool outdoor bar as well that you can either grab a cocktail before you fly or sip a coconut in the sunshine just because. Hang with the fish. There's some pretty decent snorkeling all over the island, so chances are you can just walk out in front of your resort. A spot known as Fruits of Rarotonga is part of one of the marine parks and was where we found the most activity and some big schools of fish. Black Rock is also known as a calm spot but was wavy for us, though a fresh fruit ice cream from Be Fruitful was a good consolation. While you can snorkel to see the turtles yourself, we strongly recommend you don't given how powerful the current can be in the channel. It's only about $60 to go out with a professional who will guide you to not only the best spots but also the safest. Embrace the rain. How are things? Pretty good. <laughs> the Cook Islands has a tropical climate, so you just have to expect some brief rain here and there. A lot of these recommendations are already perfect for those rainy moments, but if you really want to just embrace it, Raro Buggy Tours will permanently fix a smile to your face and mud to your clothes. <laughs> and also your face, actually, but it's 100% worth it. Meet the locals. The locals on Raro are beyond friendly and you'll be greeted with a friendly kia ora na wherever you go. I'm careful. I'm the biggest boss of this hole. <laughs> <laughs> Some say New Zealand has only two degrees of separation. If that's true, then Rarotonga is only one. There's a rich traditional Polynesian culture here if you're open to finding it and not just staying in your resort. And there's a real feel of pride and community as well. This is Radio Cook Island broadcasting from <laughs> no Nose House. The progressive dinner with Cook Islands tours was a fascinating way to visit some local villages and experience the true Cook Islands cuisine and hospitality. We tasted our way around three different local homes to try their home cooking. Take a day trip to Aitutaki. While not strictly an activity on Rarotonga, a day trip to the Cook Islands' second most popular island is possible as part of a packaged day trip without having to stay for a few nights. It's a 50 minute local flight with one of the most stunning landings we've seen anywhere in the world overlooking the insane lagoon, which is where you can spend the day cruising, exploring, swimming, snorkeling, eating, drinking and tanning. We've spent a few days exploring Aitutaki so we'll share more in our series starting soon. Bonus tips. The Cook Islands use New Zealand dollars along with a couple of unique looking Cook Islands coins. Paying with a card is common but not always the case and reception can cause problems sometimes so having cash is king. Speaking of, there's a few ATMs about but cash withdrawal comes at a price. Even with an NZ bank card it's a $5 fee. Don't rely on Wi-Fi. Just expect to be somewhat off the grid. Even the expensive resorts don't have consistent connection speeds. You can get a travel SIM card though for $49 from Vodafone with local calls and texts, plus 5 gig of data which actually has decent speeds. Given the strange state of the world these days, it's a good idea to bring along your own mask and snorkel. And that's a wrap on our Rarotonga tips and travel advice. 
We'd appreciate you giving this video a little like if it's helped or you've enjoyed following along and drop a comment below and let us know is there anything that we missed that we need to check out next time. Stay tuned for our six part video series from the Cook Islands coming real soon.